your boy, I need to look at my notes while doing this video from heaven, but at a music series that I have not done on this channel. I pretty much know no music series on this channel because I don't do anything on this channel consistently. But this will be consistent, I hope. The best three project, or the, maybe my most favorite three projects I heard this week. This week is basically supposed to be last week. Uh, I just got the video up now. Uh, so I'll probably try to do another three Sunday for this week. I'll try to put them out each Sunday. We'll see how that goes. So number one, we'll be starting with Eblis. Um, and Ikai Solos' EP, Return to Forever 2, which, if you look at the discography here, a lot of interesting-looking projects from this produ uh, producer, Ableist, Verify. Uh, it seems that this Ikai Solo fellow is pretty much his boy. Uh, he's coming up with, reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, Tyler and Earl, something like that. Um, and going along the train of thought, this is definitely some 2010s um, New York influence type of uh Steez, I guess. When I listen to this, it reminds me a lot of um, 1999. Uh, I don't think he's quite as... I guess it was like very uh, beats on 1999, but as far as that in-house uh, pro-era style, it's not as much boom bap in this. Things like, um, I believe, Cluminati in the, uh, the track before with uh, Capital Steez as well. I can't seem to get the name on it right now. It's reminiscent. Like he's definitely has that knowledge feel to some of his uh to some of his beats, Eblis does, and it but it doesn't get like crazy. Like, it never gets crazy. It doesn't remind me of like some Captain Murphy or like Lord Quaz. The, the samples aren't really that off the wall, I should say. But lyrically, I could go without it. It is also reminiscent of of New York, early New York in that sound, early twenty tens New York in that sound, because I don't seem to appreciate most of what I Kai Solo is saying. I just don't like he has that really smoked out voice like hotness. Like it doesn't hit any highs at any point. It reminds me of what uh if you had like a really drowsy um currency or if you had Joey Badass in that position, that transition between early 2012, where his voice was still like kind of young, you could tell he's like still in puberty, to about 20, to around the time of 2013, around summer nights, his voice was really like rough, and it just didn't work. That's kind of what I feel like with Akai Solo. So, in that sense, I don't think this would be like one no, of the he best. He, thematically, he works. I mean, he's like this. I imagine 2021 year old guy kind of transitioning from, you know, life uh, on the, you know, not on the streets as in being homeless or something like that, but like just hanging on the block and stuff like that to more adult themes. Um, it, it, it just doesn't bring anything new to the table. So going from that. What could I have said to raise you from the dead? Of All right, back with number two. Carrie and Lowell by uh, Sufjan Stevens, Su Subian Stevens. Someone today told me the correct pronunciation of that name because I said it wrong, and I was happy they did because of this video. Subian Stevens, Carrie and Lowell, one of the more critically acclaimed albums of 2015. I listened to a lot of music 2015, but I did not really go too far outside of hip hop. Of course, like with everybody, I listened to Tom and Paula and Currents. Um, I think I listened to Melissa by FKA Twigs. It might have been 2015, 2016, I believe. Uh, but not really too many explorations outside of hip-hop back then. But after Kobe's passing, a form that I frequent often, uh, guys, a big Suyon Steven Stan referenced this album as something that'd be good to listen to to kind of cope with what happened with that. And obviously, I'm not, like, too attached to Kobe Bryant, but I thought this helped me with my own thoughts about how wide and, and paralyzed and the concept of death is. And this this album, when you look, uh, read some articles on it, read about it on Wikipedia, read about it in general, hear about it, this is a guy that just had no kind of other, I should say, outlet. His, uh, Lowell is the stepdad or 
the partner to carry uh his mother so in that sense i don't get a dad really go to and and asking about this i'm assuming make an assumption there um it seems like he's really just congested with, with these thoughts uh he from what i gather he was a very uh or he probably is still to this day very agnostic um i don't get a lot of i will see you off in heaven vibes i mean the leading off track and one of the favorite my favorite tracks in the entire decade death of dignity he pretty much says it's the last time that you'll see us again you'll be in the mom and us you know us so essentially i don't believe that he seems to believe much in the heaven so this is his way of just plainly putting down like, death is death and it happens and comes and it really is it really is it helped me a lot um as far as understanding the world and uh pretty much a linear life that we as people live uh and it is just amazing folk music um i can stomach folk music i can even appreciate folk music sometimes i think that as a genre it's very easy to look past folk music like folk music bedroom pop even dream pop a certain degree certain genres that depend on i guess a vibe and a mood that the production sets over lyricism which this album is lyrically very tight uh, stuff uh, like that you can kind of just get lost into it and not really you know come, come out of anything of a uh, substance gus dapperton to some degree people like that but i thought this was a fantastic lo-fi album it is damn near perfect um favorite tracks death dignity one of the best tracks I've heard the entire decade. One of the best lead-offs you could possibly ever put. The uh, three-song opener all could be my top three. I only should have known better. It's quite as good as All of Me Wants All of You. That's a good... Uh, that's like a... a it could be like a, a alternative hit, I feel like. But I went with uh, Fourth of July as my number two. A uh, really good kind of parallelism with the uh the rhyming structure he does a lot with that uh probably using the word parallelism wrong but you know i got an a in, in english comp too so suck my yuck uh and no shade in the shadow of the cross also another lyrically tight song that i don't think i gave enough listens to to really put it in the same way listen i played death Dignity like 25 times in the past like three days i don't i think i stopped playing the song fourth of july is great a lot of these songs are also produced. I know Suyon Stevens, like, calling card is his production. They're so well produced that, like, I can stomach, like, five-minute songs, four-minute and 44-minute songs with only, like, two, two men, two and a half minutes of lyricism. Hit All right, so we got... A young trap artist named Money Mar appears to probably be about maybe 16, you know, if not, honestly, if not younger. He, he has like that old man, young man kind of face and build. Like the tattoos kind of make me think like 18-ish, but like, I don't know, man. This dude could be like, a, he could be like five or six different ages, honestly. But, um, yeah, youngest trapper, uh. And, I mean, you could just look at this to kind of get the theme on how concise this all is. I mean, there's a few songs that I could definitely live without. Um, I feel like it started out good. Whip Out the Stick, I originally had liked that song, you know, on Spotify terms. v uh Free Jack Boy. I thought it was like Kodak's Jack Boy, but it's a different Jack Boy. Uh, Trap Spot, I thought that was good. AR was great. That was like a hit. I think that's the song on which uh, it went into my uh, feed. There's my AC unit right there at the wrong time, of course. Him and, I guess, Baby Nino. Nino? Baby Nino, maybe? Um, good combo. Crunch Time was decent, too. I didn't like that one, but... Like... But, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a decent, decent one. Oh, yeah, um, I had to mention this one. So I think it was no dissing. This one samples the uh, Stink Meter episode, the first Stink Meter episode from um, Boondocks. And 
No Disc is a good song, but it's just like, it's like a small verse, and then it's the, the Boondock sample. Then, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not a longer song. It's one of the better songs on there, honestly, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, Whip Out the Stick, I guess I should do my top three. Oh, yeah, Whip Out the Stick, uh, reminded me a lot of Emily Chopper, kind of like the, uh, the, the, what's the Shot of Flow? That, that series he does. It reminds me of his flow, the first one, I guess. And uh, Jay Youngin's a lot of influences on that, too. I think uh, v Loan and Trap Spot were ones that I thought sounded like Jada Young a little bit. But, um, you know, a lot of these other songs, I mean, he's not his own person, for better or for worse. I think it was an amazing trap project, but uh, it was easy to digest. A lot, Some of the songs kind of went hard. Uh, my favorite three would probably be Trap Spot. Uh, the, the, the hook game on Trap Spot is really good. It's probably the best hook game he has on his entire album. Uh, AR, then probably v Loan. Uh, I want to give a couple more songs chances, like Lick and stuff like that, but I think v Loan is pretty solid. And uh, with that being said, this is the end of the, um, end of the video. hope you enjoy. Uh, we'll try to maybe vary up the, the options a little bit and try to get this out a little bit quicker. Uh, peace.